Hi, this is Bruce Giro, and for this contest I've chosen to weather the two bay covered hopper cars. I've found prototypical photos of the cars I intend to weather on a website, and I'm waiting for permission to use those pictures in my presentation. I will include them in a later video if permission is given, but for now, just know I would have included those pictures at this point in my video, and that those pictures would have expressed a thousand words before I had anything to say. For this contest, I've chosen to weather two bay covered hoppers that carry the commodity of cement on my layout. I would like to start by presenting a short history of covered hoppers before I get into the details of my car choices. In the early 20th century, most loose commodities needing protection from the weather moved by boxcar, either in bags or in bulk with the interior of the boxcar and door converted to contain the material. Loading and unloading these boxcars required a great deal of labor but avoided the need for specialized freight cars in the loading and unloading facilities. By the 1930s, the advantages of specialized freight cars began to outweigh the cost of labor and specialized equipment, and covered hopper cars began to appear in the United States. While most box cars built in the 1930s had a capacity of 50 tons, open hoppers and gondolas were popular with the 70 ton weight capacities. This prompted builders to build cars with larger capacities to maximize the permitted loads. The larger cars saved money for both the shippers and the railroads. Early covered hoppers were most commonly used to haul dense commodities like cement and sand. Here in the United States, the post-war era witnessed the rapid rise of construction and a little later the start of the interstate highway system. These projects created a huge demand for building supplies including cement. North American rail car manufacturers raced to build a variety of rail cars including the covered hopper cars as demand increased. As the years have passed, the low capacity of two bay covered hoppers has changed with the improved designs and materials to what we have on today's railroads. Certainly as the United States continues to develop and replace its infrastructure, the two bay covered hopper will continue to be the backbone for transporting the necessary cement from the mine mill to the local batch plant where the cement will be used in concrete. Okay, I got my package from Midwest Model Railroad today. Uh, I purchased four rail cars, all the same with different road numbers. I'm not sure which of the uh, two out of the four I'll be using, but uh, have a look at them and I'll make that decision later on. Got the invoice. And then, yeah, here's an example of what I've got. Four of these. And there are two bait hoppers. Uh, in this case, uh, the commodity is cement. And uh, I'll be changing the trucks and the wheel sets, the metal wheel sets. So that's it. Okay, I'm going to explain some of the tools and materials I'll use for the weathering contest. Uh, I've got some chocks that I use to detail the trucks and sometimes I put some on the car bodies. Uh, I'll be using some Vallejo uh, orange rust. And I may use these washes. I've got a Vallejo uh, rust wash and light gray wash, but I'm not sure I'll be using them yet. Uh, I won't find out until I get into the process. Got some water that I'll be mixing with the Kraft Pink Granite Gray to create a wash. And then I use a small jar for small parts. The tools, I use a toothpick for burnishing, a small brush for applying the paints and washes, a broader brush for the chocks, and some sticks and skewers for holding the uh, trucks and car body while they're getting weathered. I've got an aluminum tray I use for holding the washes and mixing the, the uh, paints. And nitrite gloves for keeping the fingerprints off the working surfaces. Now I just gotta get the gloves dirty. Mm -hmm. 